Are you filled with fear, doubt, worry about the future of our country? Do you feel the urgency to act before it's too late? If yes, then this podcast is for you. It's time for us all to confront the critical issues threatening our nation's fabric, our democracy itself, irregardless of her political stance. If you're ready to face reality, handle the tough questions and find real solutions, then here's your host, Debbie Lynn Molyneux. Welcome to the Terrified Nation podcast. I'm your host, Debbie Lynn Molyneux. Can we save it? That's what we're exploring in this podcast series. And for me, the answer is a resounding, yes, we can. And we must. This show is for people who give a damn about the future of the United States and the world. It's for people like you who believe in our democratic republic, but have lost hope in a brighter future. Now, in previous shows, we've learned about how conflict profiteers are fueling our downward spiral. We've touched on how dystopian future stories dominate the narrative landscape. And we started to understand the importance of what and how we think and the implications for our future possibilities. So for episode four, today's question that we'll explore is this. Do you know what you really want? Or maybe we should call this step one, figuring out what you really want. And we all know that the first step on any journey is the hardest. So let's do this. I once took a personal growth training that used this saying, if you want to know what you are committed to, look at your results. Results don't lie. Now, one more time, because this is really important. If you want to know what you are committed to, look at your results. Results don't lie. So in my 40s, when I looked at my results, I found that I was committed to keeping up with the appearance of success without actually feeling it. I was financially unstable. I was burned out. My marriage was on the rocks and it ended shortly thereafter. Was this what I really wanted? Of course not. In fact, it was a whole lot of what I didn't want, but that's not the same as knowing what I did want. Knowing what we want can sometimes be tricky because it's much easier to see what we don't want. Our human brains are wired to look out for what we don't want, but might harm us. So this is where our results can actually reveal what we're committed to. For instance, I don't really want to be fat, but do I want to feel healthy? And if I want to feel healthy, am I committed to do what it takes to be healthy? Ah, this is the tricky bit. I know what I don't want, and that's to be fat. Yes, I do want to feel healthy. But like most people I know, I want to feel healthy by magically being healthy without any of the work. So what is the result that I'm committed to having? Well, to be honest, this is my actual mind muddle. I get caught up in committing to feeling healthy every two to three years, and I make some progress. And then I get tired of the extraordinary effort that is required for me personally. And my bad habits creep back in, and it erases my progress. So you may be asking at this point, what the hell does this story have to do with our nation? Well, it gets back to what are we committed to? And our results show that politically, we are more committed to dominating the other side and forcing our will on others through manipulation of elections and voters, through threatening election officials with harm for doing their job. We are more committed to sitting on the sidelines where it feels safer than to the democratic principles and actions on which this country was founded. So I ask again, what do we really want? What do our neighbors want? What about our closest family? And what commitment could we make to get a better result? A dear friend of mine, David Emerald, wrote a book called The Power of TED. TED stands for the empowerment dynamic. And in TED, David tells a parable that outlines how the drama triangle works in our lives and in our society. And he also shares the antidote, which we'll get to. In case you're not familiar with it, the drama triangle is a model created by Stephen Cartman around 1960 to explain a psychological phenomenon he was seeing with patients. In the drama triangle, there are only three roles that people can play in relationship to one another. And those roles are the victim, the rescuer, and the persecutor. Now, when we experience trauma, these are the only three roles that exist for us. Someone has been hurt. Someone rescues them and someone is to blame. Think of your a melodrama, if you will. And can you see how this frame that is helpful for escaping trauma 
has been manipulated and spread throughout society. Because in the drama triangle, regardless of which role we are assuming, our focus is on what we don't want. There's a problem and we focus on avoiding it or making it go away. And this is how people become othered and blamed for societal harm to us. So let's look at a real issue that's plaguing us in late 2023. And I just, I am so tired of this one. But in 2022, the Supreme Court struck down the Roe decision, which ruled women had the right to privacy in reproductive decision making, including abortion. But with the Dobbs decision, they ruled that each state can decide if abortion is legal or illegal within their jurisdiction. Now, no matter which side of the abortion issue you are on, the political ads that we have and will continue to see will follow the drama triangle roles. There is the victim of the Dobbs ruling, women who've lost rights or babies who will be born. The persecutor, the Republicans for taking women rights or the Democrats who want to kill babies, and the rescuer, the Democrats for protecting women or Republicans for saving babies. But what do we as a nation want in regards to balancing the needs of women with those of potential humans? How do we decide? Or is this an issue where goodwill cannot be found to create reasonable legislation or amendments so that we can move on to other pressing matters facing our nation? See, abortion has become a fundraising, voter-motivating issue that the parties will not let go of until we, the people, demand and act to settle the issue. The drama triangle is used as a way to manipulate us endlessly. And until we see the game en masse, it's going to continue. Knowing what we want is the first step to exiting the drama triangle. So what do you want? The answer to this question shifts us from drama towards empowerment. And if, and if you think it's simple, well, you're right. It is simple. It doesn't mean it's easy. Now, the second and third questions to exit the drama triangle are also simple, but not easy. Because these are questions that shift our thinking out of the drama once we know what we want. And as we talked about in the last show, the skills most needed in the future involve better thinking and open attitudes. Here's question two. How do you see others? Because if you're seeing other people as inferior or unable to solve their own problems or incompetent or maybe even evil, you may have fallen into the rescuer role. I am an over helper when I fall into the rescuer role. The third question, what is your intent? Now, this final question needs a clear eyed answer, because when I was keeping up with the Joneses in my 40s, my intent was to look good. Some people just want to be right. Some people want to force their will on others like a bully. But for me, in trying to look good, I became a persecutor in my marriage, blaming my husband for not making enough money to support our lifestyle. I pretended to be a victim and cast him as the persecutor. And of course, he felt persecuted himself. Now, here's how we get out of this together. I've developed a research project to help us as a nation figure out what we want to do. It's AmericanFuture.us. Now, I've been interviewing people about their vision for their personal life. And when I've gathered a couple thousand responses, we'll be able to analyze what are common themes for all or most Americans and what they want for themselves. It's an effort to shift us from what we don't want, i.e. more drama in real life, to what we do want a place to call home. You can participate in the project by going to AmericanFuture.us and take the self-interview or schedule a Zoom with me. I traveled across the country in a pilot project for this project, and some common themes are already emerging. And I'll share that in the next show. In closing, I'd really like to thank you today for giving a damn about our nation. We may be a terrified nation today, but we can do better. We can save the USA. Join me next time. So that's it for today's episode of Terrified Nation. Head on over to iTunes or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week who posts a review on iTunes will win a chance in the grand prize drawing to win a $15,000 private VIP day with Debbie Lynn Molyneux herself. Be sure to head on over to terrifiednationpodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Debbie Lynn's gift and join us on the next episode.